Hey, hey, hey y'all, it is Amora from morewithamora.com, as you guys know. So I'm so excited to share this reading with you guys. So let's, let's get it started. <laughs> All right, so I have a couple decks here. All right, a couple decks here that we're gonna start with. We're gonna check with the Crystal Mandala deck, as well as the psychic tarot okay so let's start with a baseline foundation energy um, in love life spirit and truth so if you could put your feet flat on the ground do your grounding work so ground yourself taking a deep breath in and again this is the foundational energy of the collective oh my gosh i got this one a little while ago and there's a like look how thick this deck is um, but it is goddess sekhmet and this is the fire agate passion of the lion heart so the number being 888 again the crystal goddess um, or the god the crystal being fire agate and the goddess energy or the archetypical energy that we are tapping into is that segment energy which is fire which is passion which is um sexiness that grounding that root chakra what color am i wearing red right and even if you look down my cover for today's cards are red or my, no my cover what's it called my cloth my cloth for today is red um so we are doing we're very much in alignment yes so let's look into um so this is obvious i'm not gonna say obviously but what i'm feeling is this is a career slash uh money reading so let's see what is going on in our career money space what stories spirit or clear and concise reading what stories can you tell us now uh, as it pertains to this passion this being the lion having the heart of a lion that courage that ability to step out into what it is that we should be doing with our lives want to be doing with our lives so triumphant success um, so if there is something what I'm getting is if there is something that you are thinking about doing start it So this is the ace of wands. So it is about moving from the mental not wands Swords obviously it's a sword um, But it's about moving from the mental space and beginning starting something not just in the head But also see that you will be triumphant. So again the sword is air energy thoughts things that you cannot see the invisible realms of thinking and that mostly thinking mental space but look grounding it so this is allowing the the spiritual and the physical to manifest together and that's how we manifest things so this is if you have something that you've been thinking about whether it's waste beads whether it's starting a daycare whatever it is oh, and this one wants to come out too spiritual strength so we'll go into that one second um, but whatever it is that you've been thinking about you wanting to do do it it's time to merge the two to begin bringing the spiritual thoughts of oh maybe I'll do this into physical manifestations allowing it to come out from your physical space on earth okay so then tapping into the spiritual strength know that you are supported okay so it's not just oh i'm gonna go out here and i'm gonna do this on my own no you have the spiritual backing behind you but make sure that that is you you are in that i'm not gonna say the monk space but what i see when i see this monk is that he is being his highest self in the physical realm and he's not he's not the one holding everything up it, he is depending that's the word he's depending on his spiritual strength to hold up and lift up and so you too when you go into this new space don't think of it as oh i don't know if i can do it i'm just small you know it's just me i'm so small i don't know if i can get it all done know that you don't have to get it all done it's not just you you have a spiritual team behind you all you have to do is make sure you're in alignment all you have to do is make sure your energy is as high freaking frequency as you could possibly get it all you have to do is follow your heart everything else regardless of whether it looks good or you feel like it's gonna work or not all you have to do is put that step forward and all you have to do is do it okay because you are backed so let's look into um, is there a direction oh, there we go 
<laughs> the universe number 21 um so again that is two plus one being three so that is a number of mastery so mastering what it is that you're good at and that fuels your soul so the universe this is also the the world card in the traditional tarot so you have the world at your fingertips it's not even one direction that you have to go it's whatever direction the universe is pushing you into so even if you're good at a couple things and you enjoy doing a couple things go towards what it is that is um i don't want to use the word easy flow okay whatever is flowing that's where you're supposed to be if you're not feeling good at your current job, if you're not feeling good at what you're doing, just try something different. You can always go back. You can always go back to what you were doing. But when you step out, that's when you get new new things, new ideas, and then you're shifted into new places. That's it. <laughs> okay, any other messages, spirit, that you would like to bestow upon this one? Rejoice in celebration. Look at these amazing cards popping out. Again, three, that mastery. So you aren't doing this alone. It's not just you. If um, if you feel alone, if you feel like you need a business partner, don't worry about it. Just rejoice. Rejoice in what it is that you're doing. The help is coming. The help will be there when you are ready for it. When you are ready for it, just rejoice. This is the energy that we need to be in. The Three of Cups is also... Um, we call it third party situations, but that's help in this situation or in this instance because we're talking about business, we're talking about career. So if you feel you need help, you're not doing it all alone. So you do have the spiritual strength, okay? You have your spiritual army behind you and your spiritual backing, but this tells me that you actually have people in human form that are also going to want to focus on what you're doing, want to be a part of what you're doing, but you have to start first. You have to start first. So let's look at challenges. Um, goodness gracious, these are just popping right out. So challenges, we have temptation and intuition. So the temptation, this is, um, it could be anything. Temptation to stop, temptation to quit, temptation to procrastinate, temptation to not do it because you don't think you should or you know, whatever. So turning away from addictions turn, maybe you're addicted to social media maybe you're addicted to the television being cognizant these are your challenges okay being cognizant of what it is that distracts you being cognizant of what it is that takes you out of your element being cognizant of what it is that makes you feel small okay because when you're cognizant of these things then they can't affect you in the way that they were affecting you before because you see them you know what they are you don't have to judge them, but be aware of them, okay? You don't have to judge if you drink too much, or if you eating too much, or you cussing too much. Just know, you know what? I might be addicted to this. Can I stop? Can I stop right now? And then try it. Don't be like, oh, can I stop? I can stop if I wanted to. I just don't want to stop right now. Um, so whatever it is that is preventing you from focusing, because again, this is the basis, okay? The passion of the lion heart. We wanna be courageous. We wanna step out there. We wanna be that fiery, passionate energy when it comes to what it is that we, we, we have coming forth from our solar plexus, from our heart, okay? From our soul, alrighty? Um, so that's the first one is the temptation and the other one that came out with that is intuition So great job for even showing up and watching this video because if you're watching this video Then you are part of one of my energy mentorship groups and you're working on your intuition Okay, but if you're not working on your intuition So if you're not in my group and you're not doing something else Then your intuition is actually going to be one of your biggest challenges Because you're not going to be able to connect to it if you're not doing the work Okay, so yes, there are external forces that could be bothering you. It could be preventing you from um, stepping out into this new career space or uh, elevated career space. Maybe it's not a new career. Maybe it's, you know, you're just going to the next level. This is external, okay? So if we start with the external, this is the internal, okay? Internal work. And if you're not doing the internal work, you're not going to be able to connect to the intuition and it's going to be a problem. Because you're going to feel like you're not going to know what to do. You're going to be like, uh, should I eat pizza or should I eat salad? I don't know what I want. Should I quit this job? Should I go to this guy? Like, you're not going to know what. It's just going to be confusion. So do your work. 
and I'm here if you need assistance with an energy mentorship of course that's what I'm here for but you don't have to do it through me but the work is that you have to work through your intuition clearing out what no longer serves you clearing out what other people's ideas are other people's thoughts clearing out the secret fears that we have about tapping into our own intuition because there's a lot of programming and things that we've been taught yeah so if those are the challenges let's now ask spirit what is the best course of action <laughs> awareness and wisdom so the best course of action is your intuition so this wisdom this is the hierophant in um in the traditional tarot and that is a teacher that is someone that brings wisdom into your space that brings new ideas and new thoughts he has a he has a, a book that's lit up okay so that's enlightenment he brings enlightenment to the new city he's walking around the dog's like who is this why are you coming to see my family but that's what it is he's bringing that light he's bringing that enlightenment to the family so and this being awareness this is the magician in the traditional tarot so again we have we have someone that this is the best course of action, or uh, yeah, best course of action. Um, finding someone to assist you. Sometimes we need to be in the energy field of someone else that is doing what we want to do, that is um, experiencing what we want to experience, that carries the energy that we want to carry. And sometimes that's the best way for us to step out of what we've gotten used to and what we're into. Okay. So again, I'm here. But these cards are popping out on their own, okay? I'm not telling you, oh, let me, you should do an energy mentorship with me if you're not because, nah, these are popping out. So if it's not me, maybe it's your grandmother. Maybe it's, you know, someone else, which is absolutely fine, but look, be on the lookout for it, okay? Be on the lookout for it because someone can assist you. Um, maybe it's someone in your field. Maybe it's a spiritual advisor. Maybe it's... Could be your cleaning lady. <laughs> it could be your cleaning lady that just has some old school wisdom that she doesn't even know is wise and all of a sudden you're blessed by it, okay? So good job, good job guys. And what is the best possible outcome? Spirit, love, and life, what is the best possible outcome? This is the moon card. Mm. I'm just looking at the photos. So we have the dark side over here. We have the light side over here. So you're going to be faced with everything that is you. <laughs> everything that is you. So that's the best possible outcome is that you're going to look at yourself and you're going to do the shadow work. This is about shadow. Oh, obviously shadow. <laughs> you're going to do the shadow work. And when we do the shadow work, what happens? Light. Boom. Light. Hope. This is the sun card. All right, so we go from the moon in the darkness into the light. Yes? So, yeah, guys. It's about shadow work, um, this full moon. So, in the Sidriel, I believe it, that's the... Yeah, in the Sidriel, it's actually in Ophiuchus. This full moon was in Ophiuchus, which is the secret or the hidden 13th sign. Um, which, to me, makes so much sense because that is about shift. That is about shadow, which we just pulled. That is about the shadow work. That is about um, old. We have also have the re Mercury retrograde coming up. So doing the work. It, th everything in this message is about doing the work. <laughs> All right, and it's about career. So doing the work in many ma in many ways, in more ways than one. All right, let's do one more card, and we're gonna go back to the crystal mandala card. So spirit and crystals. One more card to wrap up this reading. Give us some more clarity, some more high vibe and frequency energies. And so it is. What do we have now? Divine alchemy. Yes. Look at that color. I love this one. So we have transmuted all that red energy, even just through this reading, because these readings are also healings. Um, so just through this energy, you've already shifted a lot of energy, okay? So Ascended Master, Mary Magdalene, we've actually moved. Um, we're now to the Ascended Masters, this Crystal Masters number being 333, three, three, Divine Alchemy and Aqua Aura Quartz. And I want to actually read this one. So, Divine Alchemy, Alchemy with Amora. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so... 
we bring you the blessings of divine alchemy. Divine alchemy is the art of transmutation, the application of spiritual consciousness to physical form, so profound that an entirely new form evolves. It is irreversible change. It is the coal transformed into the diamond, the lead of sleeping matter awakened into the radiant gold, radiant gold of consciousness. Successful alchemy transforms, successful alchemy, alchemical transformation requires patience, courage, and a belief in the power of spirit above all else. Where's that spiritual strength card? Boom. Spiritual strength. And what else did we say? Um, courage. That's that first card we pulled. The, uh, where did that one go? They're all in here somewhere. Okay. Um, the radical and permanent transformation affected by divine alchemy may seem miraculous to the outside viewing the change form, the changed form. Yet the alchemist knows that when spiritual consciousness meets physical matter, the world will never be the same again. Alchemists have often been considered eccentric. They appear to labor on tasks the mainstream either don't comprehend or consider impossible. Yet the alchemists of old and the modern day spiritual alchemists are the ones who really see the reality more clearly and understand divine power most accurately. They know the healing transformational power of divine energy is beyond any limitation the mind can conceive. This is why they never assume that something is impossible. They are open to the workings of divine will and how healing can best happen which is not always the ways one might expect. They do not see the realities as fixed and the material world as a solid, impenetrable, unchangeable form. They know that all creation is energy and energy can change form. When higher consciousness is applied to the energy, the form which evolves is one of shining divine beauty. The sole task of divine alchemists, whether they think of themselves in those terms or not, is to repair the damage that fear-based consciousness has generated in the world. Repair the damage that fear-based consciousness has generated in the world. A divine alchemist may do this with a focus on environmental or socioeconomic issues, or through the arts, creative expression, healing work with the body, mind, and soul, or through cooking and educating others about nourishment. Alchemists may do their work on greater human collective, may do their work on the greater human collective powerfully, but behind the scenes. They may do this by bringing higher consciousness into their own being and then allowing that to penetrate their work in the corporate world, financial, legal, or political sectors, or in the worlds of marketing and media, where their elevated spiritual frequency is so needed at this time. No matter what realm you enter, your soul has the ability to trigger alchemical change. Whether you are always conscious of it or not, your presence is helping to repair bodies, minds, hearts, and souls from the terror that has been conditioned into them over lifetimes. You are helping to heal doubt, fear-based habits, and self-destructive behavioral patterns that plague the human collective psyche. You are here to apply love, higher understanding and wisdom to the world. In the application of that higher consciousness, alchemy begins. And in that time, genuine divine beauty rises up out of the sacred fires of transformation. The ugly duckling realizes it's a swan. Alchemy always starts with the alchemist. It is, it is will and belief that empowers the alchemist to continue with their sacred work, even if it is misunderstood or dismissed by those who don't know any better. When the oracle of divine alchemy comes to you, you are being advised that something in your world, perhaps even in your body, is going to be blessed with healing transformation so profound it can never be undone. This spiritual repair is not simply a patch-up job but a profound reconstruction that will change the substance, quality, and consciousness of that physical world reality. There will be a purging and a reconstruction. 
this oracle comes to you with a message for your alchemical empowerment whatever you want to change in your physical world can change what is needed is a commitment to consciousness growth and unconditional trust in the process don't give up until it is as you would wish it to be you must believe in yourself and in the power of the divine the art of divine alchemy will express itself through you and you and the world around you shall be blessed by its healing power oh yes i love it i love it all right so there's a healing process here and i'm going to read that too so um you can pause it here get your meditation say it or your your space set up if that's what you would like um and it says to integrate this guidance you may like to say this invocation now i call upon the crystal angel of aqua aura quartz and ascended master mary magdalene who love me unconditionally Thank you for the healing blessing of divine alchemy. May I be gifted with unassailable faith in the complete healing transformation possible with higher consciousness. May that which has become damaged be repaired. May the consciousness that has become diminished be revived into unconditional love. May all divine alchemists that serve unconditional love be empowered, supported, sustained, inspired, and motivated in their work until they manifest the divine potential seeking to be liberated through their service. Through divine will and of my own free will, so be it. So then, if you wish to further integrate this guidance, Hold, um, either you have the crystal aura quartz, that's what I would suggest if you have it. If not, we will be working with the throat chakra, so go ahead and grab a blue stone. I got my lapis. Um, and you want to hold it at the throat, the lower neck at the base of your throat. So we're doing down here. You may like to hold it horizontally, vertically, however it feels right for you. Doesn't matter. Um, but relax. Breathe in and out several times. Then say aloud with me. I choose of my own free will. Through this and any lifetime. And through all layers of my entire being. To release any doubt. Or fear. Of my ability to know. And embody higher consciousness. I choose to place unconditional trust in the loving transformational power of consciousness and cultivate my own awareness daily, aligning it into unconditional love. May the blessing of divine alchemy restore my physical reality into absolute alignment with divine will and unconditional love. May all divine alchemists be so empowered that together we can create heaven on earth for all. Through divine grace and unconditional love, so be it. So you can hold the car, uh, crystal between your palms, place your hands in prayer position with the, with the crystal between it, like that. Like that. Um, bow your head and say, May divine alchemy prevail and restore all of creation to its authentic, shining glory. According to divine compassion and in service to the great divine plan of love unfolding. So be it. And then you can finish this healing process with this affirmation said aloud, three times through my surrendered service divine alchemy heals and tr transforms me and my world through my surrendered service divine alchemy heals and transforms me and my world through my surrendered service divine alchemy heals and transforms me and my world yes yes and yes 
I feel good. I feel it. That was a lovely reading. I'm quite excited, as always. Um, someone was like, I said something the other day. I was like, oh, how awesome. I'm so excited. They're like, but you're always excited. I'm like, oh, I can't help it. <laughs> so thank you guys for watching. Coming to holla at me and Bessie Eagles. <laughs>